All right, we got everything loaded up. Apparently, I didn't manage to start record button a while ago. We got everything loaded up on here, and car looks pretty good all together, and uh, got it buttoned down all nice and safe. Just my head on back, and then uh, hopefully we can yank this motor out today, get it prepped for the five-speed swap because it's an automatic car, and then tomorrow we'll get his car taken apart, and Sunday we'll get it put together. So let's go and get this rodeo started. We picked this car up. Somebody done blow something up over here. What? I don't know. I think they just got a big ass fire. Yeah, they do got a big fire going. Let's see what they got going on. It looked bad from up the drive line sitting there going, oh my God, what is that? Oh, they burning out. That's what, isn't that where that hospital used to be? Right yeah. there? Over on that side of where? Yeah. Well, it ain't there no more. Well, they only have flags up when, you know, during the races and stuff, but no talent thing. We go into the car wash, the car wash, yeah. Dig for it, dig for it, like a big old wedgie. We're gonna get this engine base sprayed off, get it all cleaned up. We're gonna go rip this motor out here in a minute. And this is a brand new car wash. They just got through finishing everything up. And we're gonna check this thing out and get it broken. Nice. Broke the hood latch. Whoop, whoop. You didn't try to pull it up, did you? You pulled out? That's what she said. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with this thing. All right, we made it home from the car wash and we are dropping this sucker right on in. Ooh, look at it go. All right, we did not video much on this. Got in the groove and forgot and got everything pretty much ripped out. This is an automatic D-Series. The head was already loose. They were going to put a head gasket on it or something, whatever. It got bagged, throw it in the back. Um, having problems with a little bit of rust on some of them. Keep breaking off bolts in there, and hopefully it goes smoother. Uh, we got everything out ready to go. Uh, radiator, trans lines looped. If you're taking this off, loop your lines. That way you don't make a mess. Loop it on the radiator so it don't make a mess. Um, we went through, took everything apart this down a lot of people when they're doing axles and stuff i only take off these two bolts right here that way the whole top drops down pulls down and then you can take off these two right here with your brake line that way it's loose get your axle loose the whole thing pulls out one get your axle out and you can push it down far enough to where you don't even have to drop none of this i loosen it at the top just so it can wiggle a little bit that's it uh, cause we're going to have this, we got to have this car back rolling cause we're going to get it out, bring the green car in and then pull everything off of it, get it ready, set it to the side. Then this car is going to come back and get the green car swap in it. Cause, uh, we'll show you on the green car when we get it, the mount right here, everything is ripped apart and destroyed. So this hatch right here is going to be the actual body that the, uh, super duper motor goes in. So all we got left now, we're gonna raise it up. We're gonna take off the exhaust. We're gonna take off the shift linkage for the automatic and then drop the axles out. They're already gone on both sides, ready to go like there. So it's gonna be super simple. Drop this down, get everything out and then yank the motor out. All right, this thing is all rusted to hell and bat. Having problems getting it off up there. We finally got the last thing going right here. Well, I really thought that was going to go bang, bang, and all that good stuff, and it did not. Yeah, we're going to jack it off. Yeah, jack it off. Got that one off. Everything's out. Harness is out, all that good stuff. A bunch of extra transmission lines because it was automatic. Everything's off in the back. Bolt's out. That one is rusted. Don't want to come off. And you know how those mounts tear anyways. The mount's coming off. It's tore. So he's jacking it on up, and it is tearing the rest of the way. And it's going to give. Oh, yeah. It gives. 
Oh, oh, pan. Let me get a pan. Oh, yep. Do we need a pan? Where's that little pan? There it is. There it is. Water pan. Yeah. All right. See, we dropped it down, slid forward. I didn't get to keep my hand on the camera, but hey, not too bad. He's going to hold it up straight. We're going to come straight on out with it. And then be good to go. All right, this thing jumped and slid, kind of caught sideways like that. Uh, we're gonna put a bolt through here so it can't slide no more. I'm gonna take one of these power steering bolts and drop that bad boy right there. That way it'll keep it right there where it can't come back. Whew. All right, she is up and we are coming backwards. Well, I say we're coming backwards. I'll guide the... There we go, yeah. Got everything ready to go. We're gonna PB blast everything. Let it set overnight. Get back at it tomorrow and uh, have at it. Well, he started taking everything off. Got the mounts off. All those came off good, thank goodness. Uh, this did not, it broke on the inside, the tabs on the inside of the frame rail. So we're gonna actually drill that out we're going to cut that off, drill from the side, put a nut on it so it can still have stability there. And then when he gets to this one, we'll see what happens over here. I know that same thing already happened on this side. Not sure on this side. Hopefully that will come out. We'll do the same thing. We'll come in. We'll drill a little hole. There's already a hole on that side, but we could do it over here. And then uh, fix that with a nut. Uh, on, this is the auto car. They had speaker wire running in through there. We're gonna bust that out, pull those, or pull it back through, pull those two little tabs, fix that. Uh, then I'll show you when we get to that part on the automatic conversion part. Inside here, we took all this stuff off and then took the unplugged from there. I'll show you how to make on that one right there, how to make the plug to make your to make it think that it's in park or neutral, which would be the same thing as a neutral safety bypass switch on a manual car. And then on the ignition keys right here, your ignition will not release it and turn over if these other two wires are not popped together. And I'll show you that right now. All right, that's pretty detailed right there. So the two thickest wires on this plug from the automatic console, see how that is? The two thickest wires, you're gonna take those, I put one of those yellow butt connectors right there, and then I put heat shrink on it, and I'm just gonna heat shrink that. Now, as you see, I cut all the other wires on there that's not in use, because we have no use for those. These two on the bottom, this yellow one and green, are for your reverse lights. You wire those in, and then that way your reverse will work from the automatic. Because, you know, it's on the shifter on the inside. And then, you know, you got to wire these into your harness for the uh, five speeds. Uh, these two right here, this black and green one. hope y'all can see that pretty good. Uh, that's going to allow as your neutral safety bypass switch. So, you can either run these all the way over to your neutral safety bypass switch if you're going to do that. But you don't have to. Uh, you know how we do on cars. If you got a performance car, you don't want a neutral safety bite where you have to mash the clutch because you do not want to have to put pressure from the flywheel and pressure plate up against the car and then it end up pushing on the crank and having all those problems because that is not good if you got a high horsepower car because you're pretty much dry starting it with pressure pushed up against your thrust washers. You want it relaxed where it can turn over and the oil ports go through where it's no problem. So these two right here, reverse lights, these two, neutral safety bypass switch. And then right here, the ignition thing for your key. Your key will have problems coming out if you don't do these two together. So key, start with the neutral safety bypass switch and reverse lights. All right, on this automatic deal right here, you got four bolts on the bottom for this shifter. So once you modify that plug like I showed y'all, go ahead and uh, these other two plugs can be pushed back out of the way. Oh, these other two bullets may be pushed out of the way. These two is where you're at. A shifter will bolt into where it goes right there. And then 
uh, with the rubber bushing. This is where we're drilling out. We got one, two, three, four, five that I can see. We're gonna drill these out. I'm gonna drill them out pretty big. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom side and see what's left because I don't see any more spot rivet sides over here. But there might be some uh, thin ones on the bottom that don't go all the way through. They just go from the reverse metal onto the inner lining of the tunnel. Uh, when you knock this crap out of this, do not damage all this metal up here because you don't want to warp it all up, especially these two back here because that's where your shifter is going. But now we, we ended up drilling out multiple more down here on this to get it out. You can't get it off from the top. You have to come from the bottom. And uh, that one right there was being a little booger. But uh, we got it. Got all that stuff done. We'll dust it with... Uh, some spray paint so this won't rust and carry on about our business but got that off all nice and neat and i'll show you what the one looks like that we took off and then uh we actually didn't get it all banged up and rough except for that one little spot that was a booger one, but it's there we go there's all the ones that we had to drill out so a total of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and these tips right here so i guess 11 12 but that was it it came out good all right guys so i showed you on that other setup where once we drilled that thing right there with the automatic this was the main automatic unit then the cable things went through here i showed you all those holes to drill at the top and then at the bottom you started off the five at the top and go to the bottom and so now we're putting the shift linkage back in and yes i'm out of breath because i just climbed up to oh god anyways Right here, there's a dimple here, a dimple here, and uh, see, there's some good old, uh, what's in, what's in? That's added value to the yeah, car. Yeah, got some. I don't know what those little white sunflower pellets are, seeds and then and the some, sunflower some seeds. That's that's yeah, that's lovely right there. So, anyways, uh, here and here. So he's gonna go ahead and start drilling into that, and that's gonna be where the new shifter bolts go. From the bottom, this is what it looks like. There's that, and there's the two holes at the end that he just drilled. So we're gonna take these bolts, and different people's bolts may look different. That uh, depends on what style you use. And I'm gonna run those up into these, and yes, this is very dirty and greasy. But we're gonna send it. Right, slide one bolt in. Take this, I'm gonna try to hand him the shifter. Uh, and anyways it goes in that bolt hole i can't do it with one hand i'll video it in a second do i need to tighten anything else up up here uh all right now you can snug those once i get those in all right so the those are in he's snugging it with a lock washer and a nut up top and then we're gonna run these straight on down to the transmission over there and the shift linkage is in all right so i slid this one over the trans and now we're gonna slide this on the bitch pin part. It's actually a roll pin, but we call it a bitch pin. Take that. Slide that right over there until it makes it to where it needs to go. And then we're gonna knock that bitch pin right on back in there. And then we gotta find the dust cover that goes over this and put the, uh, or washer, washer, yeah, a big old washer that goes over that and then put the 12 millimeter uh, back in it. And the shift linkage is completely done. We're gonna start putting fluids in this bad boy and we will be ready to rock and roll. And we'll show you what the, you can use any type of metal up top. And uh, we'll show you this little shifter that has a big boot in it. 
That's good for that. I think you can get those at the auto zone and get the little yeah, shift boot cover. All right, for the bitch pin, take this thing right here to put it in, because when you try to start it back in, you can either knock the crap out of your hands or you can use a uh, little Allen head type deal like this. That way it slides right up in there. Or you can use some type of punch, but if you use a punch, sometimes they get stuck. So take this, slide it on like that. Fits in there just right so it holds it at the bottom. Then you can put an extension on it so it don't knock the crap out of your hands. And then stay away from it. But put it in there, put it up, and go bam, 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 bam. All right, I got it. Don't. Maybe you can see as I'm knocking it in. Got that on the extension, get that there. and see how it came out it didn't get stuck you put some stuff in there it gets stuck and then that ain't no good now that's nice and flush i don't have the lo roll lock keeper thing but it'll be all right because the sucker ain't coming out this is the piece of metal that we're using to cover up on the hole area where the shifter's at and you can actually use a tag as you can see it's basically the same size you might trim it up a little bit so if you got an old tag or any tin or any type of metal like that you can take it and cover it up this one was in another automatic car and they took it and they glued it like glued it glued it glued it and that's fine or like on my car on the the civic oh my christ i didn't do that uh I took tin and riveted. I took small tin and I beat the heck out of it to make it curve around the humps and stuff like I wanted it to. And then riveted it in with eighth inch rivets. So there's multiple different ways of doing this. So that's common. Somebody's got a tag laying around that's old. Chop it up, trim it up how you want it, or just beat it around, rivet it in. And that will cover up the hole. Let me show you as it's sitting in there. You can get like at AutoZone or O'Reilly's or anywhere like that and they're really cheap or you can get them off of ebay amazon super cheap and uh take that you can cover right over that and that'll cover up the rest of it and it will help you with your exhaust fumes being tight on the shifter all the way down and then i just set that uh thing that's about the size of a tag right there so you can have an idea of how it looks and there of course is a harness plug that will tuck on the inside and this fits right there on that tunnel nice and you can beat a tag around how you need to that thing's thicker than a tag but you can beat a tag seal it with silicone or uh uh dap or any household type uh caulk and then uh my brain is not with me today so it's like good but then you can rivet it in or just go to a paint and body shop or somewhere and get it called fusar it's expensive. That's really not a great option, but it will never come off and it will fit in there very well and still it's super good. But uh, that and with that on there, that'll do it. I'll put this on a little bit and slide it over. That way you'll see what it looks like. All right. So that's what that piece looks like covered over. And now, so if you use a tag or metal, or whatever, that'll cover all that through there. You can glue it on the bottom. Make sure you spray paint or something under there for where all you cut so it won't rust. And then come back and these you can put sheet metal screws in that way this can come on and off for if you want to whatever and uh boom there you go when you go and put your clutch master cylinder in right here you're gonna have to have the whole unit which is like 24 dollars i think at one of the parts store this is a uh you you, you got to get this how to pull apart or ebay or somewhere i don't think you can get this at the parts store your reservoir uh you can get a whole cable line that way you ain't got to deal with none of those hard lines because they suck anyways and then it cleans up the engine bay and you get that one unit that comes with the kit that comes all the way down all the way around to your slave cylinder and i think they're like 35 to 100 dollars depending on what you want uh, some of them are cheap some of them are great don't matter i've had luck with all of them uh your preference on what you want uh but there'll be like two little black grommets right there you rip those out knock that center grommet out and that goes right in the hole's already there for that clutch master cylinder 
then you're gonna come to the inside. For the pedal, you can either do multiple things. I cut my finger while I go and slung blood everywhere. Yeah. Uh, up under here, see how that's, you have to have a clutch pedal. And on this clutch pedal, I've already cut the neutral safety bypass switch, or the wires are there if you wanna wire it in. So when you put the clutch pedal in, you see how this goes up and then there's two bolts, one there and one right there. So once those go in, uh, run those down and you'll take that clutch, uh, the bracket thingy right there and you'll slide the pin back in the top of there so it can push that unit in. And that is up there that unit right there the silver thing into the pin up, or the other pin and slide it through up there now there's two different ways you can uh, you can just buy the clutch pedal and cut this right here on your brake pedal that way you don't have to spend all that money because you can go to pull apart or whatever you can just buy the clutch pedal and not have to do all that this pedal has a stop welded to it because this car has a twin disc clutch in it so you can run it like that that way you can have a pretty big back brake pedal you can actually cut this side too if you want to have clutch brake and gas but uh you can either put the whole unit of all that mess in or just this one and trim this side right there and that'll save you some money and if you do want to run a neutral safety bypass switch all you got to do is run these two little wires to the neutral safety bypass switch that allows you to crank the car then these wires right here you can take those and that's what and that allows your ignition switch to turn on and pull out and then this is for your uh, uh, reverse lights. And we'll wire those in in just a second. And that is your complete five-speed conversion. Of course, you need a slave cylinder that, you know, I showed you where the clutch line runs to the slave cylinder. They're cheap. Usually, if you're buying a five-speed trans, it may already have one on it. But if not, you know, they're not bad at all. They're fairly cheap. And this is the hatch that we just put all this in, which was an automatic. And now it's a five speed and it's got a 62 62 on it open up open open atmosphere dump or hood exit exhaust it's got a hood exit exhaust uh, victory sleep block elder brock 2200 cc injectors uh this runs on a uh hall tech standalone and this thing right here should boogie 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 it was in this car over here which was not a very great car and it had a lot of damage in it and all this mess right here the motor wasn't even connected it was bad every which way and uh motor mounts were broke catch can thing was broke this car was wrecked real hard and smashed right here and rewelded back together this broke on the back wasn't much holding this one in so swapped it around got everything in the hatch now and it should haul ass but hope that helped y'all out hit that like button subscribe see you later